G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Sporting in on the west side of the map. Playing as the English in the colour teal. It's Beastie Cutie! And on the east side of the map, playing in the colour red as the Holy Roman Empire, it's Puppy Paw. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Canal. We're here on this EGC TV map because we are watching an EGC TV game. This is part of Golden League 2. If you want to check out Golden League 2, Saturday, Sundays, 15 GMT, 10 a or 10, 10 a.m. Eastern and 2 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. That, those are the times that you're going to have to be watching. But let's take a little bit of a look at this because we've got ourselves a classic English opening. I think we saw three villagers on the barracks in the opening. Uh, and then Beastie's moved everybody over to food. Uh, so it looks like he's going to be heading out with some pretty aggressive early mana arms. We do see a second mana arms in queue now. It looks like he might have a little bit of idle time at the town center. Might have to force drop here if he wants to avoid it. There we go. Gets the villager in queue straight away. So second mana arms out already as well. So we have got ourselves some very early aggression. And I think this is aggression that is just unmatched. There's no civilization that can really can really do anything about this early aggression uh, from the English. Just mana arms are un... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of tempted to say I wouldn't be surprised if they nerf Vanguard or Vanguard Men at Arms back to what they used to be. So they used to be 2-2 two and two armor. Uh, and then they moved them up to 3-3 three and three armor in the few, in the Dark Age. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see them go back to 2-2. Two and two, Just because they're so strong. They're so damn strong. And you just, like, you, you can't respond with spears to this. It just doesn't work. And outpost, okay, it, it works and it will hold the position. But you're still going to get a lot of idle time from the outpost. It, it's just such a a worthwhile investment for the English player because these units aren't useless. After after the Feudal Age, or rather after the Dark Age, they become Feudal Men at Arms and eventually Castle Men at Arms. They're still very valuable. So I think that uh, this this unit's probably a bit too strong at the moment. But uh, let's let's wait and see how the game goes. Maybe Puppy Paw's got something planned to potentially challenge this. He does actually go for a barracks. Actually, you know, now that I think about it, maybe. Spearmen together with prelates could actually do it. If we see him go into like two or three prelates with spears, then he could look to out damage or, or yeah, out, out or rather out heal the damage coming through from the men at arms. But I think the question is how many men at arms is Beastie going to be making? Because if it's any more than three, uh, I don't feel like there's any amount of spears that you could be making in the uh, in the dark age to try and deal with this. And we do see the fourth men at arm now coming out. So Beastie able to put on a huge amount of pressure early on. Now, remember, in this matchup, you know, English versus the Holy Roman Empire, often the Holy Roman Empire, the men at arms are looked at as much better than the English, or at least against each other, just simply because they have more attack, much more attack than the armor uh, of the English ones. But remember, when you put crossbows behind these bad boys, they're still pretty tanky, uh, and they're able to do, they're able to put out a lot of damage, uh, the crossbows on the backside, and they don't really take a lot of damage. So do we dare see the prelate move out? That's going to be the second... Uh, the second Spearman joining the fray here as he looks to put on pressure. But just remember, so much armor on these guys, right? Like, they're, they're, you're doing four damage every stab of a spear. It's not a lot of damage compared to the eight damage that you're receiving just from a single man at arms. So, I think uh, two men at arms can beat one... Or one man at arm can beat two spears. Uh, so, you'd need a lot of spears at this point. But still trying, to, trying his best to hold on. You could potentially look to put an outpost down and then put your spears inside the outpost. That could be something that could work. The other option is to potentially build up um, emergency repairs towards this shoreline, but it's going to take a long time to do that. I can't help but feel like you're just going to have to give up this dock. The consequence of uh, of playing up against the English on a map like this. We continue to see more men at arms coming out. Beastie is committing to a huge amount of men at arms in the Dark Age here. Up to four men at arms so far. He takes out the sheep as well. Four men at arms. We see the fifth one joining in. The sixth one is on the way. The seventh one is on the way. The eighth one, not quite yet in queue, but I'm sure it will be very soon. This guy means business. Don't mess around with the beast. Not in the Dark Age, baby. This... This is, this is a crazy amount of men at arms. He's got another one in queue. He's up to eight men at arms in the Dark Age. That's a lot of men at arms, and he's going to try his best to fight against them with, with the spears, but I think without the prelate, it just makes it very, very hard to even justify fighting. I think with one prelate, you're probably not going to have enough healing power against this many men at arms. You might need a second one, but I think there's definitely something to be said about an early possible window, but it seems like this dock is all but dead at this point in time. And indeed... The fire now starts a burning. Men at Arms are having a great time here. Beautiful micro from Beastie, keeping that Men at Arms to the back. 
and slowly but steadily he continues to build up now do we start to see an addition of farms i'd love to see farms come through from him or actually you know maybe just a dock would be nice and that's exactly what it's going to be a dock here definitely makes sense for him to be moving in, into the dock and now going to be able to put the pressure on puppy paw at this spot now i guess puppy paw can always just look to put a dock down over here and then have some long range fishing that could be an option for him let's see what he does and whether he go goes for something like that Remember, emergency repair is not really going to be a reality here. In fact, do you... Yeah, emergency repairs is available in the Dark Age. It's just you need structure damage. There you go. And you also need to have the influence of the emergency repairs there as well. More men at arms. He's up to 10 men at arms in the Dark Age. Does this unit need to be nerfed? That's the question I'm going to be asking. Because, uh, as I mentioned, it, it got the buff before and we started to see more and more of it. But now there's a part of me that thinks, look, I, I don't want to call for my own favorite Civ to be nerfed, but like, look how well, I, I mean, I'm just going to admire these men at arms and how well they're fighting in this position. Such a tough spot for Puppy Paw. Not a single men at arms goes down. He's still sitting on 10 men at arms, able to keep alive these low health ones, can just pull them back. And I, I think the real issue just comes into the lack of damage that gets done, right? Even just reducing the armor by one takes their damage from four points up to five. And that, that's a significant increase. It means that you, instead of 25 hitting the uh, the, the men at arms, you 20 hit it, which is it's not too bad. Arkham Chapel going to be coming in now on the backside of the base for Puppy Paw. He's going to have to be reverting to a pretty standard game here. A notable absence of fishing boats. Does get that second dock up. And now pressure going to be applied. I mean, Puppy Paw's doing a good job of not necessarily holding this attack, but he, he does manage to take out some men at arms. But, like, he, he's causing a reasonable investment into the into the uh, the Dark Age here by, by Beastie. So I think he's got that going for him. And now the Spearman numbers are getting to the point where he's actually able to hold on here. He's on eight spears at the moment, only four on the front side. Barracks looks like it's about to begin going down. Could pull a villager here to try and get the repair off. Spears continue coming in. It looks like he might just commit to this. Puppy Paw reaches the Feudal Age. And there's the Vils pulling. We're getting pulled. Going straight for Harden Spearman. It's going to take 15 seconds, but he doesn't have a lot of spears left to, to fight with. Villagers coming in for the repair. He realizes that it's likely that this goes that this goes down. He's going to get the hardened upgrade through, but even if he gets it through, it doesn't mean anything. And yeah, he cancels the hardened upgrade. He's only got three spears, and two of them are on very low health. So Puppy Paw taking a bit of a, a bit of a defeat early on in this game. The question is going to be whether he can get himself back into it. On the other side of the map, Beastie's going for the Council Hall, and we do see a lot of villagers looking to, uh, to begin working their way through that now remember the council hall has been changed significantly in the most recent patch most notably it's got the ability to train crossbows now and with its ability to train crossbows that means all of a sudden that your men at arms from the the second age that you can make mr holy roman empire player well they're counted very effectively so that's something to consider so i'm curious to see where beastie goes from here whether he looks to play it out in feudal if i'm in beastie's position i'm probably going castle right like i just i want to get to castle at this point I, I want to try and look to take over the game uh, from the Castle Age. What, what's really great about this map, Canal, is that it, you're backed into the corner, right? Like, you're literally in the corner, and it means that you're fighting from the pocket. So it makes it very difficult for a civilization like the Holy Roman Empire to capture the relics if you've got good map control. So that is something that, that Beastie can look to establish, look to gain. He puts down the wall in the middle of the map. There's no way this galley's getting through to disrupt the fishing economy of Beastie. Beastie puts a dock on the other side as well. It's going to be a Hulk coming out now. And pressure going to be applied to this second dock on the north. Men at arms of the Holy Roman Empire taken out by the men at arms of the English. Or vice versa, rather. And now an outpost coming up. Nice little cheeky outpost. Puppy Paw definitely staying mobile, staying flexible here. A little bit of damage comes through. Hulk going to be coming out. Now, you're going to have the defensive bonus here. The healing, the repairing. Being on this dock... Should give you a nice little defensive advantage. You can see him trying to work through the galley. Not going to have any luck here. And trying to actually take out these men at arms. Men at arms doing very small dodges. <laughs> the men at arms even taking damage there. I, I think he took about three damage. He went from five health to two health. So not a huge amount of damage. And now we've got the, the Holy Roman Empire men at arms coming out. And th this is what we were talking about earlier about why English are so good at the moment especially into this matchup, it's because of the Council Hall. You don't you don't really have to think too much. You're just going to make crossbows, and, and that's it. Take a look at Puppy Paw. There's a lot of vills here on gold. Either he's thinking about upgrades or he's thinking about castling himself. 
Beastie on the other side of the map. Not making any units at the moment. Normally a good indicator that he might be going castle. Demos come out. Demo number one comes out, explodes. Demo number two explodes. Everybody just getting repaired up by the AOE here. Of that, uh, of that dock. More attacks happening behind the scenes. And we can see that the, the yes, galley's going to be coming out. Is, is he got a way to get around here? How does he get around here? Or is he just... He's just built that on the backside just in case. And it doesn't look like we've at all got an attempt for a Castle Age from BCR. I thought that it might be the case, but it's not going to be. He instead resorts to making units. So going to be sticking more and more to the Feudal Age. But he might be in a little bit of trouble here on the water. Demo moving up. It might be able to get this shot off. It does indeed. Blows it up. And now the galley going to be going down to 17 health. He should be able to take it out in one more shot. I'm not sure why the Hulk isn't firing. There we go. He gets the return fire. And Puppypaw is able to keep his fishing economy for the moment. So, I mean, there you go. Puppypaw, obviously, a really good player. Beastie, undoubtedly, one of the best in the world as well. And now we've got ourselves a little bit of a, a demo sacrifice. And now Beastie might actually get pushed off this position. He, he, honestly, if I'm Beastie, I'm looking for a, uh, an expo a demo ship right on top of all these men-at-arms. I don't actually think you'll kill... All, you won't you won't kill them, but you'll you'll do some de decent damage. Let's say that much. So where does Beastie go from here? It looks like he's just looking to defend his own side at the moment. Outpost did get cancelled, so that never went ahead. Demo ship gets copped on the front. Doc is going to be going down. A lot of men at arms now coming out all of a sudden. Single spearman on the backside, but Beastie nowhere near castle. What's Beastie up to? Let's check in on the base of Beastie. See how he's doing. Council hall. Producing some longbows. Just chilling in his base for the moment. He's actually out on berries here. Never feels good to be out on berries this far away from your base. We'll switch it over to the income so you guys are able to see how many resources these guys are pulling in. And Puppy Paw could be looking at a castle age. Remember, he wants to try and get up to that castle age, pick up the relics. I suspect he probably wants to be going for a regnitz. And if he can get castle, he can look to get his castle age upgrades... There's some really big upgrades available to him as the Holy Roman Empire. Most notably, two-handed weapons and heavy maces. Extra eight damage coming in against heavy units. So now going to be looking to put on the... Put on the pressure to his opponent. Longbow is coming through. No plus one ranged attack just yet. Ranged armor has come through on the early men at arms. So just going to be doing only, uh, only two damage to these men at arms. He falls back though, appreciating the fact that that's a, that's a significant amount of units. And obviously, when your opponent... When you're, you're attacking the opponent's base, there's a good chance that there's going to be reinforcements on the way. You always got to be watching out for them. Nice. I, I, I'm loving this wall from Beastie. Just kind of creating a... It, it's a very... It's a safe space, right? You're challenging the enemy's water. And if, if you challenge them unsuccessfully, well, you've still got a safe space tucked in behind. So I think that's pretty smart. But have a look at the resources here. Puppy Paw, surely going to click Regnets, and it's going to be the Regnets. Interesting. Why was that? Why Why did he reposition it? I think he repositioned it because it's closer to this side. Now an outpost is going to be coming up from Beastie. Longbows teeing off towards the galley. Looking like they're going to have some solid success here. And look at this. We've got the fishing boats actually pulling. Trying to keep the, the galley alive. Galley does go down. Men at arms on the front side. The age up's coming through. If he takes the fight right now, he's not going to be able to get to the castle age. Get those castle age age ups or castle age upgrades. And it's going to mean that he's going to be in a tough spot. He needed to he needed to keep these units alive or go to the Burgrave. One of the two. But if he's playing Regnitz Cathedral, he needs to keep these units alive. Imperative that he does. Because he's going to have to look for the next tier of upgrades. He's got plenty of resources in the bank, ready to do it. Let's see what he clicks on as soon as he ages up. A little bit short on food at the moment. And now those prelates moving up towards the north. First one heading up far. Outpost going to be coming down. Village is going to be moving up as well. I think he might just be looking to drop down an outpost or something. Throw that relic straight in there. That way he doesn't have to work his way back. Could also look to do the same thing over here. That would be a very smart move. And then he looks... The Regnitz is going to look after the bottom side. That could definitely work. Men at arms got to be careful though. Upgrade coming through. It's going to be going from the early men at arms to the men at arms. There it is, baby. Extra health, extra armor, extra damage, extra everything. And now those men at arms up towards the north. You can see that the uh, longbows were looking to try and pick that off. Keeping a track on these villagers, keeping track on, on the prelate as it makes its way towards the north. The men at arms looking to try and dish out damage. Plus one ranged armor or uh, range attack going to be coming through there. 
He's got to be careful not to lose that prelate. Look at the look at the micro coming in. Beastie trying to pick it off. He's going to be able to get it as well. That's 100 gold down the drain. Good night, sweet prince. And now the archers jump inside the outpost and attention is turned towards that position. He's got a couple of a couple more that he can look to take. What were these villagers doing? And why did he not? Did he just, does he just know that he's not going to be able to get there in time? Maybe he knows that he can't get the outpost up in time. I feel like he probably could have got the outpost up and put the relic inside it. But not going to be the case. Longbow's looking to try and intercept. Not going to find it. And now, the, now the longbows will go down on that south position. We've got action all over this map. Puppy Paw has hit the castle age. Where is Beastie's castle? Though? That is the question. We are yet to see any prospect of a castle age. He is committing heavily to a feudal age pressure right now. And now those villagers are going to head back towards the base with their tail between their legs. It looks like the prelate did go down in the middle of the map here. And that leaves one prelate remaining inside the Arkham Chapel. One prelate just getting produced right then. And zero relics in the bag for Puppy Paw. Despite being aged up now for close to two minutes. Pressure applied to this dock. And Beastie stacking up 1,500 food behind this. Double farm rings transition. Actually working on the third one here. Beautiful little farms he's got here. Now Men at Arms looking to come across the map. Moving out to the next source of wood. Look at this Puppy Paul might even sense it. Beastie knows something's up. He's, he's got the line of sight from the dock. He knows what's happening. And now these ships have broken through. Beastie obviously deleted the wall. And the White Tower comes down. Beastie looking to place a defensive White Tower. Look at what we've got right now. We've got ourselves a meta where the eco economic landmarks just don't seem to exist anymore. Except for the Burgrave. Or except for the Regnets. Uh, don't, don't mind the Regnets. The villager gets taken down. I and mean, arm's going to be moving through. He's got plus two ranged armor. It's going to cancel out any of the plus one ranged attack that the enemy town center's got. And he can idle out a huge amount of the economy. But look at the White Tower. It comes up with perfect timing. Men at arms, get out of here. The White Tower is saving the day. Beautiful stuff right there from Beastie. Wonderful timing. I don't think you'd really change the outcome there if you go for the King's Palace. But you definitely save a lot of idle time that was going to happen. Really well read there by Beastie. Emergency repairs coming through. Outpost looking to hold down this position on the front line. No sprinkled in placement here is going to make it very hard. And down on the south side, we've got we've got a double mill. Prelate moving out, looking to pick up those relics. One already in the bag. Some knights going to be coming through here as well. Knights definitely going to be effective at cleaning this up. The problem that you're going to have is just a lack of resources. Farmers getting taken out. Already 17 worker kills this game by Beastie. Now towards the middle of the map. We've got a huge amount of units. What are these units doing out here? I can't help but feel like these units would be better served towards the, the base of Puppy Paw. They, I mean, they're out here. They, they're, they're creating havoc. But at the same time, it's like... Surely having these extra units back here is going to be so much more helpful. Still yet to see these upgrades coming through. No two-handed weapons. No heavy maces just yet. More villagers getting taken out. He's slowly pushing forward. The Arkham Chapel almost idled up completely here. Throws a couple of safe farms on the backside. I've got no idea what these units are doing out here for Puppy Paw. And now Longbow's going to be looking to move around. Trying to pick off some vills. No veterancy through just yet for Beastie. Veteran Spear's going to be on the way. Do we see any spears on the front? No spears on the front at all. Puppy Paw is biding his time. And I've got no idea why. What's he looking to do? What's he looking to achieve? Second Relic is coming back in. I guess he knows that he can't be killed at this point and he's just... It's not doing a whole lot. It's just kind of delaying him. More units in the middle of the map. But these guys are just getting cleaned up by the boats. Now that third Relic. Looking to get picked up. Beastie with the White Tower. Look at the crossbow production we've got. We've got double crossbows, baby. Oh, you know we got to get a picture of this. The double crossbow production bonanza. Oh my lord. Beastie goes for the crossbow blitz. Look how many crossbows he's got. This is one of my favorite combos. Crossbow, spear. I love this. And I think this is going to be the future of English. Just simply because of that council hall change. It just changes the way that English look to play. And we don't even see veterans he throw on these longbows because Beastie doesn't even want to make any more longbows. These are throwaway units for him right now. And now we finally see those knights and men at arms come make their way back towards the base and look to clean up this position. But Beastie, he's got a plan. He's got a push. 
So what do you make against this composition? You might be wondering, how do you beat this? And the answer, Manganel. A Manganel is what's going to clean this up. So the burden then gets turned from uh, from Puppy Paw once he's got the Manganel out to Beastie. Beastie then needs to deal with the Manganel. He needs to get Springles out himself, and then it becomes a battle of of the Micro. Uh, you can also look at things like a big Archer Mass. A big Archer Mass will do well, but then this combo loves to play Siege because Crossbow Spear is great at defending against any kind of cavalry. That's what makes it so difficult to deal with. It's, it's one of the, the favorite combinations out of the Mongols. And now we see it coming out of the English. Four minute arms moving out. Puppy Paw, despite spotting all those... All, all of those uh, crossbows... Still looks to commit. Demo ship! Oh, my lord, a swing and a miss from Beastie. But I tell you what, you got to watch out right there. Oh, my. <laughs> Beastie jumping off the top rope. Fortunately, Puppy Paw rolls out of the way at the last second. And Beastie's stomach hits the floor. Uh, that was that, that was a close one. <laughs> that was a close one. It, could, that, it was a nice bait. It was a nice bait, mate. A great bait. You know, I, I would say that Beastie is a master when it comes to the baiting. All right. Let's, ju let's check in with him, though, because he is pushing out. He's got quite a decent-sized force here. He's up a cake score. We're right on board with him. His enemies picked up three relics. And, I mean, at this point, Beastie's economy leaves something to be desired. But his military, that's what I'm excited about. This combination, we've talked about it many a time before. He is looking to, to put on the hurt. Crossbows on the, on the backside. They're going to be fine. They're going to be well protected. Just a few spears here to stop those charges from coming through. And the charges do indeed look to hit. All of these uh, these spears on the front, but you can see just how well the crossbows are doing. He's, he's keeping such great spacing. Now going to be coming back. Those That extra uh, movement speed from the men-at-arms is in. He does have the, the military drummer upgrade. I can't actually remember what the name of it is, but he brings back the crossbows towards the shoreline. This is where you need those extra spears to come in, and he's just going to be able to kite for days here. You can see how little damage is being done to these crossbows by these armored units. And Puppy Paw, at this point, would just have his head in his hands, and good game gets called. Beastie absolutely styling over Puppy Paw with the English. A beautiful combination of landmarks that we see from him as well. Fellas, I hope you've enjoyed this game. Make sure you go check out EGC TV every weekend, Saturday, Sunday, 15 GMT, 10 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Australian time. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.